Let's talk about a few of the other tabs in this video. Uh, the video before this we covered basically up to the rake top tab and now let's cover arch, bulkhead, height, horizontal, and equal horizontal tabs. And then we'll have one more video to cover the remaining tabs. So, so to add an arch top, this is a simple three panel elevation. And to add an arch to this, we would just click add and tell the program what panels the arch needs to span. So from panel one to three is how it would work. So you'll notice that it has to be a panel specific arch. It can't be, you know, 10 inches into a panel and ending four inches uh, into a panel on the other end. So it has to be a complete panel. You can have an arch in just one panel. So I would say from say, you know, from panel two to two, I have an arch if it only needs to be over panel two. But since this is a small elevation, let's go ahead and make it the full width. So panel one to three is what we're saying. Now it's 100 inches wide. So for the minimum radius would be half of that. So let's say 50 inches would be half uh, of this. That would be like a half a circle basically. And if you wanted a flatter top, you know, a, a, a more shallow uh, arch basically, then the radius actually has to be bigger. So we'll go ahead and enter something like um, 75 inches and see. So it's an either or. I could have said, say, if I want the, the arch to be 12 inches above the flat top, I could have just entered 12 here and not the 75. So it's one or the other. But let's go ahead and see what 75 does. We add that to the drawing. So that's the radius, which would mean the radius is down here somewhere. Um, or yeah, I mean the center of the circle would be down here. So uh, it tells us, so remember that the program starts out with a flat top ele uh, elevation and then it basically adds the arch to the top of it. So here's your your standard opening was uh, 100 inches and then with the arch on top it's 119 and an eighth and then it gives us the rise right here. So it's fairly simplistic. Uh, right now the verticals don't run through so you might not even want to bother putting glass into the arch because if it does the verticals do need to run through you're going to have three pieces of glass not one. So the answer to this right now is to open this up with CAD and extend these lines to get your drawing right and then in the optimizer adjust the length of the uh, vertical cut pieces so that they're the right length. So eventually we will have it so you can move these head, these horizontal pieces up and down. Uh, the verticals will run through and someday we hope to have spokes and arches within arches and things like that. But probably the, the very next step would be having the verticals run through and allowing you to move these uh, horizontals up and down. So uh, keep that in mind for the arch and uh, that's how that would work. Now the bulkhead feature and then it's real simple to delete the arch we just hit delete. So the bulkhead feature is basically telling the sill to step up uh, however much you want. So we're going to say add. If I want the sill just in a couple panels to go up 8 inches I'm going to hit select panels and say panel 2 and 3 and then add to drawing. So there's what it looks like with just a couple of the panels. So I could also have, let's say there was a door in panel two, I could also have the entire sill go up three-eighths of an inch if I want to cover a, a cock joint and have show it with the jams running through to the ground but the sill sitting on top of the cock joint. So you can add a three-eighths inch bulkhead in that case and get the look you want and also get the metal cuts you want without having to uh, modify anything. So that's again dealing with ground zero the door jams are always going to go to zero where the sill can vary based on your uh, bulkhead height. So that would be the bulkhead and you could actually these little check boxes down here allow you to check and uncheck this feature and different things. So I could take it out of panel two put it into panel one real quickly and easily just by clicking those check boxes. So something that you'll notice on a few of these different tabs so keep that in mind. Uh, now the height tab, that's basically adjusting the height. So it's the opposite of a bulkhead. So the height would affect the header and not the sill. So if I want the head to drop down eight inches, or actually I wouldn't say eight inches down, I would actually have to say 92 inches would be the head height. 
in selected panels, so say panel 2 and 3, and I hit OK and add to drawing. Oops. <laughs> um, let's see here. Height from bottom. So add bulkheads. Oh, I'm sorry, I was in the wrong tab. My my bad. So okay, we're in the height tab, and I guess we select the panels first, and then I would say 92. So you saw what happened when I put it in a 92 inch bulkhead. Um, okay, so now I want the head to drop down to 92, which is eight inches below the the actual height of the opening. So so height is affecting the top of the head uh, height. Bulkhead is affecting the sill height. So same check boxes down here to move it around or uncheck or add. Um, so very similar to bulkheads, just the opposite end of the elevation. Horizontals, um, those are real simple, probably one of the most often used things you'll have. You can have uh, horizontals in selected panels or all panels. So let's say if I wanted it 30 or 26 inches at all panels, I can say that type in 26, add a drawing. And if I want it to be uh, that's at a specific height. So if I wanted a height, say 12 inches above that horizontal that I just entered, then I would select this option, put a 12 here, and add. Now it's going to show me um, it's basically 12 from the bottom to the top, I believe. So the daylight isn't 12. So you have to kind of think about where, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, it should be the bottom to the bottom. So it's taking into account the profile of the horizontal. So keep that in mind if you're working with it that way. If it's a two-inch system, which this must not be, it's a inch, it's a two and a half. So this is a two and a half system. That's why we've got the nine and a half um, daylight after I added 12 inches to the uh, height from the previous horizontal, but. Basically, it's how it works. Just as long as you know that it's working from bottom to bottom, um, you can adapt your, uh, you know, dimensions that you put in accordingly. Now, the type two and three, this affects the. You can have four different types of horizontals, so uh, they can be different profiles, they can be different part numbers, or a mixture of both. So it's perfect for curtain wall if there's um, spandrel on one side of a horizontal and insulated glass on the other, you know, that kind of thing, quarter inch versus one inch. And uh, you can have the parts configured in the framing system and the profiles as well. So if I add a, let's, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So if we go to edit the framing system for this elevation, let's say I go to number two, this is a two and a half inch system. So if I, if I only want a two inch uh, horizontal for type two, then I put that in, and over here are the part numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. So the part numbers uh, would be whatever they need to be here. And again, if I clicked, click OK, if I click this button here, this only affects this elevation. So you can have a global setting by clicking here and configuring a framing system, or you can just affect one elevation this way. Um, but now that I changed the profile, we know it's going to draw correctly. So I am going to add a type 2 horizontal at a specific height in all panels. So let's say it needs to go at 80 inches. And we should see a slightly smaller, uh, that's a 2 inch and this is 2 and a quarter. So you'll notice how it's different. So with four different types of horizontals, you can pretty much uh, accommodate any situation you need. So then we can close that window. And it's easy to delete or um, you could actually change the heights here and it would adjust the height of the horizontal just by changing it there. Now the equal horizontals, this was available in version 14, but it was a little bit hidden. So equal horizontals are real simple. So let's actually go back here. We'll delete all these different horizontals. And we'll go to equal horizontal. I'm going to tell it I want three sets of equally spaced horizontals. And here again, you can do the type 1 through 4. Uh, but it's going to be the same type on each one. So if you wanted them to be different, alternating, but equally spaced, you're going to have to figure out the spacing and enter them individually in the uh, regular horizontal tab. But So keep in mind, it's going to make them all the same. And I'm going to say add a drawing. All it's doing is just dividing up the daylights so that we've got equal daylights with three rows of horizontals. So pretty straightforward, but now it's got its own tab and it's real easy to work with. So that's how that works. So keep an eye on the next video for uh, the remaining tabs.